Speakers, publishers, consultants, coaches, and info marketers unite. The Speaking of Wealth Show is your roadmap to success and significance. Learn the latest tools, technologies, and tactics to get more bookings, sell more products, and attract more clients. If you're looking to increase your direct response sales, create a big-time personal brand, and become the go-to guru, the Speaking of Wealth Show is for you. Here is your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Speaking of Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, where we discuss profit strategies for speakers, publishers, authors, consultants, coaches, info marketers, and just go over a whole bunch of exciting things that you can use to increase your business, to make your business more successful and more and more passive and more and more automated and more and more scalable. So we will be back with a great interview. Be sure to visit us at speakingofwealth.com. You can take advantage of our blog, subscribe to the RSS feed, and many other resources for free at speakingofwealth.com. And we will be back with a great interview for you in less than 60 seconds. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn about investing in and managing income properties for college students, there's a show for that. If you want to learn how to get noticed online and in social media, there's a show for that. If you want to know how to save on life's largest expense, there's a show for that. And if you'd like to know about America's crime of the century, there's even a show for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything. Only from JasonHartman.com. Or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. My pleasure to welcome James Malinchak to the show. He is an expert on speaking and marketing and doing all sorts of exciting stuff, not the least of which is his new TV show. James, welcome. Congratulations on your new show. Hey, Jason. Thanks so much. I'm very honored to be on and hopefully give some value to your folks. Well, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. Tell us about the show just quickly before we dig into it. I'm just so blessed uh, that I'm on this new ABC primetime reality TV show called Secret Millionaire, and basically they take millionaires out of their current element and put us into situations we're not used to living in. For example, I lived in a ghetto, and I lived on $44.66 for the entire week and had to survive on it. And basically at the end of the week, and I met amazing people during the week, and at the end of the week, I open up my checkbook and I start writing them checks to further their causes of how they're serving the people in their community. So it's, it's just great. It's one of the greatest things I've ever done. That's fantastic. So how did you get your start? I mean, wh- what is your background? Did you always want to go into the speaking business or was the start no, elsewhere? Just, I never even knew speaking existed. I had no clue. I was a stockbroker. I was a financial consultant, a young guy starting out. And they tell you the same thing in sales training 101. They say, make 100 cold calls a day. You'll get 10 people interested. You may open up one account. Man, I remember hearing that, and I said, if I have to make 100 cold calls a day, now I know why stockbrokers jump out of windows. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's not I mean, because the market crazy. goes down, so, right? <laughs> I said, there's got to be a better way. I mean, I don't like doing all that stuff, being intrusive, being a pest by cold calling. And somehow I stumbled upon, man, if I just got in front of a group of people and could give the same presentation one time, then I could market one to many rather than one-to-one by cold calling. So uh, at the time, I didn't know anything about financial planning. I was brand new, and I got this course on how to plan for your child's college education, and it was a, a presentation. And I found some local schools where parents were paying for their kids to go to school, and uh, I convinced the schools to let me come in and educate their parents in an evening session on why they should start planning for uh, now to send their child 10 to 12 to 15 years later to school. And gosh, Jason, I opened up 40 accounts after that first talk. And that's how I went on to build my entire business, uh, was awarded most outstanding performance twice, number one in new account openings twice for a major Wall Street investment firm, and it was all through speaking. And that's how I built my entire business. And what had happened one time was a, a person heard me speak and said, man, you know, you're kind of funny and you're motivational and you really care about helping people. Would you come speak to my people or my company? And I was like, well, well, sure, but, I mean, you want me to talk to them on how to plan for their kids' education? And he said, no. I want you to do a motivational talk. I'm like, well, I don't 
do motivational talks. You know, I don't even know how to put one together. And he said, well, just like tell your stories or tell how you like you stay motivated and all that kind of stuff. And he said, you know, I, I have a problem, though. And I said, okay, what's the problem? He said, I can only afford to pay you $2,500. And I said, for what? Like, what do you want me to do right, right. for, the, for the hour? And I'm like, are you kidding me? $2,500 like, no, an hour is big money, right? Yeah. And, and I took that as a two-by-four to the head. And I said, wait a minute. That's all he has, but he's willing to pay that to me as a speaker for an hour? I said, holy cow, I better learn. There, this, there must be this whole speaking thing out there. And I did, and I learned it like crazy. And here we are 2,200 talks later. And and how many years later? Like, Give us a time frame as to what year this was that you were a stockbroker and were you working for like Merrill Lynch or something like that? I was working for a major Wall Street investment firm. Uh, I cannot say the name because of my uh, my settlement agreement when I decided to leave because I left and started my own my own firm. My partner and I created our own. But it was a, a very major Wall Street investment firm. And that would have been probably about 16 years ago now, something like that. Yeah. And the reason I ask that, James, is because I know that the model for financial planners and so forth is they've really, in the 90s, I would say, when that got really big, they all got into doing seminars. And I've been to several of them where they invite you for a nice lunch at a nice, usually a private golf club or something, and kind of whine you and dine you a little bit, and group setting, 30 people type of thing. And I hear from my friends that are in the financial planning world, and I'm just calling it financial planning as a generic, not specifically. But I hear that that's much harder to fill the room nowadays and, and so forth for that kind of thing. Well, of course it is if you don't know what you're doing with your marketing. You know, most people think they know what they're doing because they throw an ad in a paper and that's nothing more than throwing up a blown up business card. Well, there's no headline. There's no call to action. There's no reason why, meaning reason why I should come to this thing. You know, and it's basically mo- most people have no clue when it comes to marketing. And it certainly is uh, most entrepreneurs in business today, financial planners included. You know, and I was one of those folks. I became a relentless learner over the years and got so good at it. I consulted for some of the biggest people that that you could imagine in uh, Famous Day, Famous Day's restaurants. He's one of my clients. Uh, barbecues, 170 chains uh, with $500 million in revenue. I've helped Harvey McKay, author of Swim with the Sharks. We um, had him on the show. Uh, Harvey's I, great. I've yeah. from him on how to create a consulting program. Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup for the Soul. The reason I say this is because most of us are never taught how to actually fill a room. Most of us are never taught how do you ethically influence to get people to want to come to the back to sign up for your services. And that's why my speaker trainings have gone to the top. We just did one this weekend. And the reason is is because I always teach you, you've got to come from a business mindset. Getting people in a room is a skill. Getting people to come and attend a seminar is a skill. Getting people while they're there to see the value and to see that they need you and your help beyond that seminar is a skill. And the, the important thing is it's a learned skill. Anybody can learn. It's just like baking a cake. You know, I don't know anything about baking a cake, but if somebody handed me a 3 by 5 index card with a recipe that said mix this first, mix this second, mix this third, turn the oven on for this temperature, put it in for this amount of time, pull it out, I know something for certain. If I've never baked a cake in my entire life, I can bake a cake. may not be good the first time because I've done it just one time, but the more I keep replicating and duplicating the recipe and following the exact step-by-step instructions that have worked for other folks, I can bake the cake and make it better. It's the same for filling a room for a seminar. It's the same for getting people to come to the back and invest in your great services, your great products. You know, so I agree with you 100%. When someone says, I just can't get people to come out to a seminar, that just tells me, you know, you haven't taken the time to learn how to do it the right way. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. So I guess we'll start back with kind of your speaking business. I see how you had the, the segue there. You used it to build your, your financial services career, and then someone offered and paid you to speak, and you thought, wow, there's a whole another industry out here. So what really was the key to your, your growth as a, as a professional speaker? And maybe one way to sort of benchmark it is to talk about if you were doing mostly corporate things rather than your own programs, what were your keynote fees looking like uh, through the progression? Or if you're doing your own event, and I think you're doing both, if I'm not mistaken. What was the audience size like, and, and what was your revenue model? Was it back-of-the-room sales? Was it ticket sales, services after the fact, whatever? Well, starting out, it was strictly fees because that is all I knew. And uh, I, I love fees. I mean, I still, uh, you know, today I go for 20000 bucks and I'm raising it to 30000 after the show comes out. And the, the reason I only knew about fees is that's what I thought speaking was. It was only one aspect of the the industry. And let me just say this, Jason, it's called the speaking business, 
Most people, you know, they say they're in the speaking business, but they're really into a speaking hobby. Right. <laughs> you know, because they never take the time to learn the second side of the coin, which is the most important side, the business side. Everybody says, I have a story, I have a message, or, you know, I have 20 years of experience. You know, like I help corporate executives who want to trans get out of the business and, and get into the speaking because they see the money that's made. You know, I'm, I'm very honest up front with everybody. I said, look, I love serving and contributing and helping, helping people, but if I wasn't being paid, there's other stuff I would rather be doing. I'd rather be you know, helping in my community and serving kids. So I'm very clear that I run this as a business. So I tell everybody, look, if I'm going to help you, I'm going to teach you the business side. And the first thing you got to understand is whether you make any money and create wealth in your life for this, this speaking, it's 10% all that stuff of story message, what are you going to teach, and it's 90% learning this business because, uh, hypothetically, you could be the best speaker in the world with the best message, but if I know how to outmarket you, I'll beat you every day of the week. I will beat you every day. I don't care how good you are on stage because that, all that means is I know how to get to the people who have the money, which budgets they have, how to get them to give it to me. Right. you got to get to the stage. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And in the seminar world, all that means is I know how to create a compelling uh, seminar that makes people want to come out. See, one of the reasons most people don't come out to an event is there's no big promise. They create a, a title like, hey, let's get motivated. You're going to be more passionate. Well, what's the big promise? Why should I come out? What is the number one big promise I am going to leave with after the two days or the three days? You know, and everything that is underneath that fulfills that promise. So I just did a seminar this weekend in Los Angeles, and it was it's called Millionaire Speaker Secrets Revealed. Finally, someone in the industry pulls back the curtain and reveals the eight hidden secrets that only those of us who make seven figures really know. You will know them, too, after this weekend, and these are things that are never taught in the speaking industry. That's a killer promise. Okay, so, but back to your question, I started out as a fee-paid speaker, and that's all I knew. And, and I love it. I really do. I love getting paid a fee and going in for an hour and motivating folks, motivating college kids, motivating teenagers, and helping them have a better path to more success in their life. I love that. But what I quickly realized is you are nothing but a high-paid laborer when you do that. Because if you break down your fee on a per-hour basis, so let's say that roughly your fee is $2,500. That's where I started out when I started uh, in the biz. And let's say you're going to be gone for 48 hours. And the reason I say that is because you got to travel to the event, of course. To, to click the minute you step out of your door to the minute you get back home and put your, you know, your body in your own bed. Well, frankly, I, I would say I would say it clicks long before that in the sales process of getting the gig committed, and then afterwards, some, there's a little bit of follow up as well. So even, oh, yeah, even, yeah, you're 100. Yeah. percent So let's add on another couple of hours, right? But let's just take for this uh, situation 48 hours. If you take that into 2,500 bucks, I think you're making like 46 dollars or something like that an hour. You know, well, shoot, I can make 46 dollars in a lot better ways and not have to deal with the TSA and go through airports. <laughs> you know, so people think, wow, somebody got paid 2,500 bucks for an hour or 10,000 bucks for an hour. No, every minute you got to travel there, and like you said, all the prep work and all the post work, that has to be factored into your fee as well. And when you start looking at that in that manner, that's how you can start. That's one of the ways I teach people to start escalating their fees. Also, that's how I teach my speakers, my students, how to get booked over other people. I have a phrase. My phrase is you have to teach event coordinators how to give you money. And what I mean by that is explaining how that 2500 bucks is really not 2500 bucks for that hour. Because to an event coordinator, all they see is, I can't believe I'm paying Jason $2,500 to come in and talk for an hour. If they're experienced at all, they understand the, at least some of the mathematics that we've just mentioned, right? <laughs> uh, no, Jason, you're 100% incorrect. I've done over 2,200 presentations. I cannot tell you how many times I've had to explain that to people, and they've gone, oh, I never thought of it like that. Maybe they're just using this as a negotiating ploy, but anyway, go ahead. I, I highly doubt that. I, I don't think that a lot of these folks are business savvy like we are, like you are, your listeners are, like I am. And I don't think they actually ever thought of it that way in any manner whatsoever. The other thing, too, is I teach uh, my students, hey, look, if you're going to go and do a presentation, then you also want to explain it on what it would cost for, let's say, that HR person to send their employees out to a public seminar. So if you have 
you know, let's say 300 people and a public seminar where they're going to go out to get trained from nine to five on a certain skill like time management. And let's say that that fee is $100 per person. Well, what you do is you explain to the event coordinator, if you were to send your people out to one of these seminar companies, 300 people times $100, that's $30,000 you're investing to send them out. I'll come in and train your people on site for the whole same day on the same topic, and I'll do it for just $10,000. See, that's teaching event coordinators what a deal. to give you money because yeah, they never absolutely. think of it on a per-head basis either. Very good points. Very good points. So you get the fees. So in, in terms of marketing to the event coordinators and so forth, I mean, networking, mailing list, other types of marketing? D, all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> there is no one right way to do it. And what I believe is a lot of folks have a misconception that, oh, I found the magic bullet. Well, let's say you're doing three of those. Let's say you're doing direct mail. Let's say you're doing Google AdWords on the Internet. So, for example, I'm, I live in Las Vegas, and I do a lot of gigs in Las Vegas. The reason is because anyone who goes to – remember where Google is. Google is nothing more than a search engine tool. Okay, It's like a phone book. So if you're bringing a convention to Las Vegas, you go there and type in, assuming you want to save money on a speaker, Las Vegas – motivational speaker or something like that. You know, some you know, Las Vegas speaker on technology, speaker in Las Vegas on communication. Well, you type those in, we come up, and right away you know that I'm in Las Vegas. We have special uh, offers for folks coming to Las Vegas to save money on a speaker. You don't have to pay for an airline ticket. You don't have to pay any other expenses, and I'll even give you a discount because I live in Las Vegas. So that's a, a mechanism also. So direct mail, Google AdWords, there are also certain things that you could do, which are showcases. And I, I believe there's nothing better for anyone wanting to get into speaking than someone seeing you live. You can send me all the direct mail pieces you want. I can find you on the web and see your great website. But, man, if I see you and I hear you and I was moved by you and impacted, I could book you right on the spot. Okay, So there are certain uh, things like showcasing uh, that you can get into where you uh, could actually go up for 20 minutes give your presentation in front of a certain number of event coordinators and literally be booked right on the spot. Your question about marketing, the real answer that anyone listening has got to get is that there is no magic pill. You have to do all of them. Also, um, referral uh, setup system. You know, So I have agreements with friends who are speakers that if there is ever a uh, talk they can't do or if their client wants a different topic or a different speaker, then they can refer me. Now, here's where I'm different. If you ever have the privilege of working with a speaker's bureau, speaker's bureaus generally take 20, 25, uh, maybe even 30% for anything they book for you for their clients. And by the way, if a bureau ever wants to book you, let them do it because uh, I hear people say, well, I don't want to give up 20%. Well, why? All you're doing is saying yes to a date on your calendar and showing up. There's no marketing cost. So look at that 20% as your marketing cost you would have to do to get that gig anyway. And then they have the year of the uh, client. So if they say, hey, let's book Jason, the client's going to go, okay, because we trust you. We've worked with you for four years. So the way my referral system is set up with my uh, friends who are speakers is anytime you refer me to a gig you cannot do, I pay you 20% of my speaker fee as a referral just as you would pay to a bureau. So literally I've got a sales force of speakers out there who want to refer me because I'm the only one giving them 20% as a thank you for the referral. Absolutely. I don't I don't hear many speakers who do that. That's a fantastic idea. It's a fantastic idea. You just sort of consider that you've got that cost built into any customer acquisition anyway, so you might as well pay it to your competitors because then they're going to become your friend rather than your competitor, right? Yes, sir, absolutely. And, Jason, you can in return do it for those folks who are your friends who are referring. So... I have a friend I sent to Hawaii twice recently to do two different talks I couldn't do. And each time I got referral checks in the mail for a good several thousand dollars and makes me want to send him more than anybody else. So you can in turn make that another income stream for yourself. If you can't do a talk, refer it to someone but have a situation set up where you get a referral fee back for fulfilling a talk for one of your, your friends. We'll be back in just a minute. You know, Penny, sometimes I think of Jason Hartman as a walking encyclopedia on the subject of creating wealth. Well, you're probably not far off from the truth, Britch. Jason actually has a six-book set on creating wealth. 
that comes with over 100 hours of the most comprehensive ideas on investing in business. They're in high quality digital download audio format, ready for your car, iPod, or wherever you want to learn. Yes, and by the way, he's recently added another book to the series that shows you investing the way it should be. This is a world where anything less than a 26% annual return is disappointing. Jason actually shows us how we can be excited about these scary times and exploit the incredible opportunities this present economy has afforded us. We can pick local markets that are untouched by the economic downturn, exploit packaged commodities investing, and achieve exceptional returns safely and securely. I like how he teaches us how to protect the equity in your home before it disappears and how to outsource your debt obligations to the government. He's recorded interviews with Harry Dent, Peter Schiff, Robert Kiyosaki, Pat Buchanan, Catherine Austin Fitz, Dr. Dennis Waitley, T. Harv Eker, and so many others who are experts on the economy, on real estate, and on creating wealth. And the entire set of advanced strategies for wealth creation is being offered with a savings of $385. Now to get your Creating Wealth Encyclopedia series complete with over 100 hours of audio and six books, go to jasonhartman.com forward slash store. If you want to be able to sit back and collect checks every month, just like a banker, Jason's Creating Wealth Encyclopedia series is for you. So, James, that's fantastic on the more corporate side, on working with bureaus, getting paying referral fees from to other speakers to book you. That's great. Talk a little bit more about your public seminars. I mean, I, I think that one of the most valuable commodities in America today, if not the entire world today, is attention span, more than money. And filling a room ain't what it used to be, because there used to be far fewer number of speakers, certainly. We'd all agree with that. It seems like everybody and their brother's an info marketer nowadays. Getting people there to hear the message, vitally important. How do you fill a room? Well, that is something that I actually teach in a four-day thing. So there is no way possible I can answer that question in you know a minute. But I'll give you some ideas sure. that will help you. Okay. Again, it's everybody wants. You know, it's like all this nutrition and diet stuff. Everybody wants like the pill. You know, like the the thing you take and you sit on the couch and you eat ho hos and watch television and drink beers and you lo you lose weight. <laughs> you know, sure, that's yeah. not the way it works. It's the same thing for filling a room. Everybody says. They look around mine and they go, how in the heck? Jack Canfield said this to me. Jack Canfield, uh, co-creator of Chicken Soup for the Soul. He was in the movie The Secret and wrote the great book everybody should read called The Success Principles. He spoke at my uh, uh, seminar two months ago. He also spoke last year. I've done a lot of coaching and consulting for Jack. He walks into my room and he goes, how in the heck in this economy do you get over 500 people here? And paying steep registration fees too, from seventeen ninety seven up to forty nine ninety seven at certain points. How in the heck do you do that? And I said, Jack. And I also said this on an interview for him about oh I don't know a month or so after that when he interviewed me for his list. I said, Jack, I don't know one way to get five hundred people in a room, but I know fifty ways to get ten people in a room, and we do all fifty of those. As a matter of fact, what's blue is mine. I said, when we start promoting one of our seminars and we're about four, maybe five or six months out, we have 56 different steps that we do in order to get folks to come to our seminar. 56. I know people that do one and then get irritated because nobody comes. We do 56 things to get them there. I can't give you all 56, obviously, in a minute, but let me tell you one of the most effective that anyone can do. Okay, I, I've taught this to many of my consulting and coaching members. Basically, you do it by what I alluded to earlier, how I built my speaking business. I'm sorry, my uh, uh, financial planning business is you do free talks for local. And let's say you want to do a, a, a one-day seminar on communication. Well, then you need to be out in your community in different organizations speaking because they're all gathering anyway, either on a monthly or a weekly basis. And they're always dying to have speakers. The way I found them through different journals is something that major cities have called the, the business journal. Like Las Vegas has Las Vegas Business Journal. Los Angeles, where I'm at right now because I went to the Grammys last night to promote the TV show, is the Los Angeles Business Journal. Orange County Business Journal. Uh, Memphis 
business journal. It's generally around the more bigger cities. In the back, it lists, like the way Las Vegas is, all of the uh, groups in the community who are doing any type of gathering, meetings, you know, breakfast every Tuesday at the Elks Club. The General Contractors Association is meeting every third Thursday in uh, the month. It lists the person who's in charge of the meeting, who runs it, where they have it, how many people usually attend. So that in Vegas, we have over 200 of them every month that meet, and some of them are on a weekly basis. The other is, and this is kind of a shocker, is right in the phone book. If you look in the local phone book, you'll see tons. It's either under organizations or associations. It's different. Like in Vegas, they're under associations. Now, they only usually list phone numbers in there, and it takes a little legwork on your part or an assistance part where you kind of have to call them up and find out who the person is that puts on that meeting, when it is, and, you know, how many people attend, where is it at, that sort of thing. And then what you simply, this is exactly what I've done. Put a letter together that says, if you're, and it sends them out. I mean, I literally, I've sent over, I don't know, four or 500 of them out in order to get 20 or 30 people calling me to want me to speak for them for free. Remember, it's for free. So there's, there's kind of two steps to this. So step one is getting in front of all these groups. This simple letter says, if you ever are in need of a speaker, or if a speaker ever cancels, I will happily drop everything and come speak to your group. Here's what I talk on. That's step one, getting in front of them. Step two, when you're there, what you offer in the back of the room is a chance for them to have the message live on past this you know, 20 minutes or past this 60 minutes, and you're going to do a one-day training on this topic where you dive in more in-depth to it. And the cost to attend, oh, excuse me, cancel, the investment in yourself to attend is, you know, 50 bucks, 97 bucks, however you want to charge for it. It gets refunded to you when you attend the event. And the reason why is if you offer a free one-day event, nobody will show up because there's no stake in the game. Right. We've experienced that. It's better to charge people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. I've experienced the same thing, and nobody showed up. But when I you know, charge $47, and by the way, you should always end in a 7 because people move and buy more. If you study anything about buying habits, people buy more when something ends in a 7 rather than a 0, a 5, or a 9. Unless you're on television, then you end in uh, not like 99.95, like 39.95. That's why you see infomercials, 19.95. 39.95 because the triggers for people watching TV, people buy more when it ends in that manner. Anything else, when it, I can always tell who knows how to do marketing, who knows how to do uh, influence and sales because if they're not ending in a seven, they don't even know the basics of numbering. They end in like they, they charge $99 instead of 97. Now it not, might not sound like a lot to you and I, but 97 versus 99. Why does that work? I always ask this to... Well, well, you know, we we do the sevens because it seems like every info marketer starting doing the sevens about, I don't know, four or five years ago is when I noticed it. So we do sevens, 47, 97, 197, whatever. However, I, my reasoning for it, and I've heard that before, just what you said, is I just thought people were kind of wise to the nine thing. <laughs> well, let me tell you the real answer, Jace, is the answer is who cares? Because sure, it, it seems works. to work, and it's it's been definitely yeah. studied. So, yeah, when who cares, works, right? And all the, the major... You know, info markers like Dan Kennedy, Bill Glazer, Joe Polish, they're all friends of mine. I'm in all their groups. You know, Dan just did a consulting for me on the TV show stuff. Bill did a consulting. Joe Polish just interviewed me for his Genius Network interview. Dean Graciosi is the guy on TV with real estate. I don't know if you know who Dean is. Oh, of, of course. He can't running. help but see Dean's commercials uh, all the time. a real estate millionaire. He did $170 million bucks last year. He's doing 300 this year. Dean's in a lot of these groups I'm into, and you just kind of learn. You sit there and you learn, and when you find out that a lot of these folks, you know, they do all these, this is the key. So filling a seminar room, they do all these little things. You know, we do 56 steps to get people there. That's why we have 500 people. You know, we end in a seven. You know, we know the psychology of a four-day seminar is better than a three and a two. We know that the best way for me to get folks to want to come to my seminar is me out there speaking and offering something after that makes them want to come to a seminar. So, for example, May 12th through the 15th in Los Angeles, I'm going to have a 1,000 people there at my seminar. I've got Jack Canfield speaking, Joe Seisman, former NFL quarterback, Bill Glazer, top direct marketer. I'm speaking, obviously, to my event. We've got actor Anthony Hopkins coming down. 
to uh, speak for my group. And basically, we're almost, almost halfway full, and we haven't even started promoting it. The reason is because I've already been out there speaking and offering tickets at the back of the room for them to come to this event. We have not even started our direct mail or Google AdWords or anything like that because I'm just coming off a seminar this weekend and we are promoting this one. But without ever really blasting it in traditional marketing sense, direct mail, Internet, that sort of thing, I've been filling the room towards almost halfway full by me speaking and offering the ticket for them to come after for an investment. So I think if I could give your listeners one key on how to fill a room out of all the stuff we do, without a doubt it has to be be out there speaking and offering an extension of the message past what they just heard in that short period of time. Very good, very good. Well, since you alluded to it a moment ago, any tips on back-of-the-room sales, coaching? Are you doing coaching programs? Are you are you mainly product guy, blend of both? The, all the above. Yeah, right. <laughs> See, that's one of the things I believe is important, Jason, is when you have great information, you do people a disservice by not putting them into different methods of learning, okay, because everybody learns differently. So different methods of learning are coaching programs, consulting programs where folks want to learn in a more one-on-one basis or a more smaller group mastermind setting. I have 160 coaching members, and my fees range from 20000 60000 and 100000 a year for my coaching programs. Okay, so there are folks who, with the with the higher end, the hundred thousand, they get a lot more of my personal time, me building their business, helping them with their business, and they're at my house. So we're working in my house. We're not stuck in a hotel room. So it's very much more personalized. We we hang out in Vegas. We go to shows. We go to dinner. So it's like a really cool trip when they come to my house for that. So I do do coaching and consulting. Then uh, we have seminars that sometimes I'll offer for the back of the room. Uh, also have home study kits and products because some folks learn in more of a coaching sense. That's how I am. I mean, I'd rather just join your great mastermind, Jason, learn from you, invest in you, learn from you in a consulting one-on-one type of situation. That's how I learn best. There are other folks who learn best sitting in a seminar and love that dynamic of being around folks, hearing different questions going off, talking to people in the hallway, talking to folks over lunch and dinner, finding out, so what are you doing? What are you doing? How are you making this work? I'm kind of a little stuck. Oh, I see how you're doing it. Okay, so they get to meet folks they normally wouldn't have. That's the way I learn best second. First, it's one-on-one or in a mastermind setting. Second for me is a seminar. Then there are folks who learn best by listening to audios while they're riding around in their car or listening to their you know, their headset, listening to MP3 files or on their computer. Okay, for me, that's not the best way. For others, that's how they learn best. So if you don't take your great information and deliver it in that method of learning as well, you're doing those folks a disservice. Then there are other folks who learn best through video type training. If you don't deliver your information in that manner, you're doing that segment a disservice. And then even a fifth market is your, your folks who learn best through the written material. So that's why having you know, your stuff transcribed and having the transcriptions of your audios or your videos or even your seminars, there are people, I always do this survey when I'm teaching speakers, when I ask them to put their hands up and ask, how do you learn best? It's amazing how many people learn best from reading the stuff, even thick transcriptions. They'll be like, you know, I don't really listen to audios, but I sit up late at night for an hour every night and I read stuff. So therefore, if you don't put your stuff in transcription form, you're di- you know, doing a disservice to that. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Population. You know, p- Different people have different modalities, no question about it. it. So that's putting it in, but any tips for selling at the back of the room or packaging services, bundling them correctly or anything like that? Yeah, uh, again, this is actually this last seminar, this weekend was four days on that so yeah i can't give it all in a minute obviously but let me give kind of a thirty thousand foot view with a couple of ideas first of all everybody thinks that in order to have more folks take your stuff home with them after your presentation meaning back of the room sales everyone thinks they need to know how to close better that's one question i get how do i close better how do i do this how do i do that what clothes should I use? What price? And I said, well, first of all, let me tell you, that's the first mistake you're making because it's not about closing and using some slick technique and some voodoo NLP magic on somebody. I don't believe in that stuff. I said, here's what it is. What I believe is you deliver the 
presentation in the right way. You deliver what you should be delivering in the right sequence, just like you bake a cake in the right sequence. You deliver value, and you help people so that they never, ever get your stuff. They still have value, and they are helped when they walk out of that room. Because here's why. Whether or not you have great back-of-the-room sales is not dependent on the clothes. That's what everybody teaches, and in my opinion, that is wrong. It is dependent on whether you deliver the presentation the right way. If you deliver the presentation the right way, you make people come to the inevitable conclusion in their mind that they need more of you and they can get great value out of you and they like you. Okay, so everybody works on, oh, I got to do this fancy clothes and, you know, this wizardry stuff. That's a bunch of crap. You deliver the presentation the right way, right sequence way, giving value, and then they come to the inevitable conclusion in their mind you know what, I like this guy, Jason, he's a good guy, seems to have my best interest at heart, seems to care about people, and uh, I got a lot of take-home value right here. I'm so blown away that I actually learned, because everybody else is out doing these slick sales presentations, and I learned from Jason. And you know what, I trust him, and I want to continue on with him. Let me see what he's got. Okay? And then very simple, in your, in your ending, you just make two offers. You make an A or B option because you want to not have people say yes or no. You want to have them see which one is best for them. Is the A option better for my situation or the B option better for my situation? So if I can kind of give all your, your folks a 30,000-foot view and say, here, here's how you want to come at it from a mindset standpoint, that's how you have better back-of-the-room sales, starting from that ethical foundation right there of give the right presentation – give a great presentation that sources and serves people, gets them to uh, have value, have come to the inevitable conclusion in their mind, you know what, Jason's a good guy, I need to learn from somebody, and he's the guy I want to learn from. So James, just to kind of, I want to get wrapped up here, and this has been very valuable. Any particular price points and package sizes for back of the room? Do you find that $300 level products or services sell the best, or $600 level? What are you finding is working the best? Yeah, you know, that's a great question, and and in my experience, the answer, and it's not the answer anybody loves to hear, but it depends. See, it depends first on you, okay? And what I mean by that, see, if, if you want to charge $997 for a price point, if you have not gone there in your mind first, you'll never be able to confidently state that in front of a room. What does that mean, gone there in your mind? Explain that for the listeners. Yeah, if you think that your product's worth $97, but you, you're, you're given a whole bunch of stuff, and, and, and me or you tell someone, you know, man, that's like a $1,000 course. If in their mind they still think, uh, you know, but it's just little old me, it's my course, it's my stuff, I don't know if I can ask for 1000 or I've never asked for $1,000. See, they haven't gone there in their mind. They're not confident yet. It doesn't matter what you or I teach them and coach them on. If they haven't yet overcome that, that fear, if they haven't overcome that mental barrier that their stuff is of great value and uh, helps people, they won't go to the 1000 from the $100 point, in their, you know, and they, they can't. They'll stutter when they're presenting it. So what I always say is this. This is how I try to help people break through that barrier. Stop selling courses. Stop selling tickets to seminars. And start focusing on the value that they're going to get when they go through it. Focus on the information. Focus on how their lives are going to be better and talk in those terms. And it comes right back to Basic Sales 101, which you know, I can tell just by listening to your master at and that I've learned over the years. Stop selling CDs and tickets because those are features and start selling outcomes, which are the benefits. And that's the great thing about our business, James, because we have the opportunity to, through a through a relatively low price product, really change a life. And so the value can be infinitesimally higher than the cost or the yeah, investment, I should say. You're yeah, right yeah, there. Definitely. You know, so back to your, like, where do you start? I mean, I spoke recently at an event where there were, see, there's so many factors that determine what you charge also for your back of the room offer. I spoke recently at an event where I uh, sold a package, offered a package for $497, which I usually never do. My normal package is $3,500 to $5,000. But there were 14 speakers at this event. It was an event I really didn't like speaking at. I don't like those kind of events. The reason is because every speaker there is offering something. So it turns into this big kind of sales pitch thing, you know, where everybody's offering a back-of-the-room product. And I generally don't do these type of events. I always want to know now the level I'm at in my career, like how many offers are there going to be? 
I don't want to be on a program where there's 14 people offering because I just don't feel good being there. But the person doing it was a good friend of mine, one of the people who helped me when I had nothing, had no money, didn't know how to speak, didn't know any of these. One of the people who were just really salt of the earth, nice guy, sat down and taught me some stuff. So when he asked me, I said, you know, I'll, I definitely will do it for you. I'll do anything for you. But I turned down all these other multi-speaker events because I just don't like to be in that situation. It makes me feel bad. I think, you know, the audience kind of, you know, before you walk up there says, okay, what's this one offering now? What's this one offering? So, But I'm on this event, and there are like 14 speakers there, and everyone obviously at the end of their presentation, which they should, if they believe in their stuff, they should make an offer. And I, I made an offer, and I, I changed the offer to be 497 because I had to adjust because of so many different offers. And what was amazing is out of the 14, even at a 497 price level, I was the number two person who had more buyers than anyone. The first was some Internet guy. Okay, But usually, for me, I'll offer a $3,500 package or 5000 depending on if I include you coming to my house for a mastermind. And uh, or it's really 3497 not 35 but it depends. So like your question about the price point, there, there's so many different variables that determine. And the thing that I think is tough is to just set in on a price and say, okay, I'm only going to offer a 197 product or I'm only going to offer a 997 ticket because it all depends. There's different variables. Which day you speak if you're a guest speaker at an event. If you're doing your own event, uh, is it a one day? Well, when should you offer your program? Well, it should be after you take the first break after lunch. So if you take lunch from 12 to 1, you come back, you teach some more from, let's say, 1 to 2, and then you give folks a break. Then you come back and you offer it. The reason you don't do it right after lunch is everyone's tired, you know, and everyone's exhausted from the food. Plus, you should come back and always teach and give more value anyway. But then you also have to leave in time for them to still be there at the event to ask you questions on the next break because you don't want to offer it like at 4 o'clock if you end at 5 because people might leave to beat the rush hour traffic. So, you know, there's a whole psychology of when you offer it and what price point. If you're doing a two-day, then you offer it in the morning before lunch on day two. And then you could set it up to where those who are really interested and in maybe getting into my coaching program, you're going to come and have lunch with me and I'll explain it more and do a Q&A. So there are so many variables that go into when and what price, and that when will help determine the price. Good stuff. Well, James, this has been very valuable. Thank you so much for sharing the information with us today. We've got some great offers at speakingofwealth.com slash offers. And do you want to talk about any of those for a minute before we go so that people can learn more? Oh, well, thank you. Yes, first of all, thank you for having me. I truly appreciate it. I hope that I have served your listeners in some way, and I really appreciate you having me on. Basically, I think in all my years of learning this stuff, I think the, the way I serve people best is if they come to a four-day training. So uh, you'll see you know, our link to some four-day trainings up there. And let me tell you, this is a training. This is not one of those you get offered all kind of stuff. I do offer a coaching program. However, that is by application only. I don't accept everybody. I have a limited number of slots. So I will talk a little bit about the coaching program on day three of the four-day event. But other than that, I mean, get ready to come and be locked in a room and learn this stuff and learn the minute details that were never taught. So I think the four-day training is, is great for any of your folks, and I appreciate you even letting me talk about it. Excellent. Hey, James, thanks so much, and congratulations on your success. And we'll look forward to your TV show and keep in touch, okay, my friend? Oh, well, thank you. And I really do hope I get to meet you someday and shake your hand. Likewise. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jason. Jason offers an Inner Circle Coaching Program. This includes two 30-minute coaching sessions for only $247 a month. For more details, go to jasonhartman.com. Copyright the Hartman Media Company. For publication rights and interviews, please email media at jasonhartman.com. This show offers very general information. Opinions of guests are their own. Nothing contained herein should be considered personalized, personal, financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. Every investor's strategy and goals are unique. You should consult with a licensed real estate broker or agent or other licensed investment, tax, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein.
Information is not guaranteed. Please call 714-820-4200 and visit www.jasonhartman.com for additional disclaimers, disclosures, and questions.